Okay, so this is the arm, and this here is the clavicle, and this is the acromion process here, and then here is the spine of the scapula, the spine of the scapula. So this is going to be the supraspinatus, the supraspinatus, supraspinatus. This is the infraspinatus, all of this here, infraspinatus. This triangle here is the teres minor, the teres minor. Okay. This is the teres major, the teres major. This is the deltoid, the deltoid. This is the brachialis, the brachialis. This is the triceps brachii, and this is the triceps brachii. So triceps brachii muscles. Again, this is the brachialis, and this is the biceps, biceps muscles. And we'll do this from a few different angles so that you can get a good idea of what these structures are. So if you take the brachialis and you follow that down, you're going to see this yellow thing here. This is a nerve. This is going to be the first branch of the nerve, second branch, third branch. So find the brachialis, follow that down, and this first branch of this nerve is going to lead to this muscle here, which wraps around. This is the brachioradialis. Bless you. Brachioradialis. The brachioradialis muscle. It's called the radialis muscle because it's on the radial side. It's on the thumb side. So this is the brachioradialis. This would be that the inside of the elbow, okay? The inside of the elbow. This short muscle here, it looks short, but it continues, but uh, this muscle here is the pronator teres. The pronator teres, okay? This does pronation of the hand, pronation, all right? This is the, the flexor carpi radialis, the flexor carpi radialis. Radialis because it's on the thumb side, and it's on the anterior side of the forearm, so this is going to be a flexor, and what is it going to flex? It's going to flex the wrist, the carpi, or the carpals. Underneath these muscles here, I've got the flexor digitorum superficialis. The flexor digitorum superficialis. Okay, this is number 26, so you can just see it here and here. All right, what that's going to do is it's going to flex the fingers. Let's continue to rotate this guy around. <clears throat> and you'll notice that this is a flexor. All right, it's a flexor because it's on the anterior side. So this is going to be the flexor carpi, flexor of the wrist, ulnaris, because it's on the pinky side. So flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris. All right, moving this right around. Okay, so now I'm getting to the posterior portion of the arm. So this here, this muscle here, is going to be the extensor carpi ulnaris. The extensor carpi ulnaris. Ulnaris again because it's on the pinky side. This is the extensor digitorum. The extensor digitorum. And then we're back to the brachioradialis here. The brachioradialis. 
And this is the, the extensor carpi radialis. It's next to that. Triceps, triceps, brachialis. Now the brachialis sits in between the biceps and the triceps. So now let's turn this around. Here I've got the deltoid. This is the subscapularis. The subscapularis. Um, here we see part of the latissimus dorsi. Part of that latissimus dorsi. These are the biceps muscles. Let me give you a good view here. It's a two-headed muscle. So this is the biceps muscle. Biceps brachii. The biceps brachii muscle. Moving it this way, I can see another muscle here. This is called the coracobrachialis. The coracobrachialis. Here we have tricep, triceps, triceps brachii. And this is also part of the brachialis muscle. If I were to take this uh, biceps muscle off, it would expose more of the brachialis. So we see the brachialis here, as well as here. Okay. And then this again is the coracobrachialis. So you might remember that this is the brachioradialis, the brachioradialis. This is the pronator teres the pronator teres, and underneath here is the flexor digitorum superficialis. Flexor digitorum superficialis. This is the palmaris longus. Here, the palmaris longus. Um, so this is the medial view of the leg. So inner thigh, where we're connected. The first thing that you might notice is this very long muscle here. This is the gracilis, the gracilis muscle. This is the adductor longus, the adductor longus. Underneath the gracilis muscle, we have a large muscle. We see some of it here and some of it here. This is the adductor magnus. The adductor magnus. This is the sartorius muscle. Right. Sartorius muscle. This allows us to cross our legs or kick a soccer ball or a hacky sack with the inside of our foot. Okay. This is the sartorius muscle. Now, when we look at the anterior portion of the leg, we can clearly see three of the four quadriceps muscles. Okay, so here's that sartorius again. Here's that adductor longus. Um, this is the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris. This is the quadricep muscle that sits straight in front of the thigh of the femoral region. Okay, rectus femoris. And the other names are a little bit easy to remember because this is the medial side. I can tell it's the medial side because it goes down over here and it's further up over here. Okay, so this is medial and it's a big muscle. So we call this muscle of the quadriceps the vastus medialis. The vastus medialis. On the lateral side, on the lateral side, we call this the vastus lateralis, the vastus lateralis. The fourth muscle, I can't um, ask you about it because you'd have to take it apart, and I don't want you to take it apart. But if you're wondering where the fourth quadricep muscle is, there it is. This is the vastus intermedius, the vastus intermedius. All right, so the quadriceps muscles that I can ask you for the practical exam is the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, or vastus medialis. Vastus lateralis, but this is also the vastus lateralis. 
Okay, so it's on both sides of this huge tendon here. This huge tendon is the tendon of the tensor fascia latte. The tensor fascia latte. And it's got this big long tendon. So underneath here is where you have the vastus lateralis. Let's look at the, uh, start looking at the posterior view here and the muscles that you need to know for that. This portion here, this is the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus. The gluteus medius sends a little bit more laterally. Okay, the gluteus medius. The gluteus minimus is only viewable if I take this off. So I'm not going to ask you about it. So you don't have to take these apart. So remember this one is the tenth, uh, tensor fascia latte. This is the vastus lateralis. And then here in the back of the leg is where we have our hamstring muscles. Our hamstring muscles. Okay. So this one looks a little bit different because it's got a muscle hiding. The one that doesn't have anything weird to it, and this one sits more laterally, this is biceps femoris. Biceps femoris. It's one of the hamstring muscles. Okay. Underneath here, here's part of it, and that's part of it as well. Okay. So right here, this is the semimembranosus, semimembranosus, and you have to remember semimembranosus that it tends to lie under the semitendinosus, the semi, the semitendinosus, All right? So the hamstrings are the biceps femoris, semimembranosus. And the semitendinosus. Semitendinosus. Alright. And coming full circle, here we've got the adductor magnus again. The adductor magnus, which is all of this. The gracilis muscle. The adductor longus. Remember, this is the sartorius, the vastus medialis, rectus femoris, and the vastus lateralis. There's just a few muscles that you need to know on the lower part of the leg here. These both are the gastric nemius muscles. Gastric nemius muscles. Their name actually means belly because they kind of look like a belly, I guess. So these are the gastric nemius muscles. Right? And here's their long tendon, which is the Achilles, hot spot for injuries. Now underneath, if I were to take this off, I could see more of it, but everything will be intact for your practical exam. So this portion here is the soleus muscle, the soleus muscle. The soleus muscle lies deep to the gastric nemius muscles. And I can also see a little bit of the soleus muscle here. It lies underneath the gastric nemius muscles. This muscle here is the fibularis longus. It lies over the fibula. Fibularis longus. <clears throat> what you're seeing here is the tibia. This is why our, our shins feel so bony, because there's not even any muscle, it's just bone right here. So this muscle here is called the tibialis anterior. The tibialis anterior. This is the human eye. Now the human eye has some muscles that you'll need to know. Remember the word rectus means straight, okay? Rectus means straight. This is the superior rectus muscle. When this contracts, the eye looks upward, looks superior. Superior, superior rectus muscle allows the eye to move superior, to look up. So this is 
the lateral rectus muscle, lateral rectus muscle, and medial and medial rectus muscle. See this little thing up here? This is the superior oblique, and it's always going to point towards the inside. So superior oblique is going to be on the same side as the medial. And I also have on the bottom here, here I have the inferior rectus muscle. The inferior rectus muscle allows us to look downward. And the inferior oblique. Inferior oblique. And that's all you need to know for this model. So just to remind you of things that you need to know for this model, the whole thing here is the neuromuscular junction. This part here is the motor neuron. This whole thing here is the motor neuron. All of this is just a section of muscle fiber. Okay, this is just a section of a muscle fiber here. When I make the decision to move a muscle, that action potential is going to be brought down the axon. So here in yellow, I've got the axon of the motor neuron. In yellow here, I also have the axon of the motor neuron. That um, action potential is going to go down towards this area. Once I start seeing these little dots here, at this point, we are at the axon terminal of the motor neuron. So that depolarization in the form of sodium ions comes down here. It's going to depolarize the axon terminal. Uh, Voltage-gated calcium channels open up. Calcium comes in. Calcium unbinds these vesicles from their docking sites. And then they're able to fuse to this here. This white thing <laughs> is the presynaptic membrane. Okay, so those vesicles are going to fuse to the presynaptic membrane and dump acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. The synaptic cleft is the space between the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane. In this model, the postsynaptic membrane is this convolution here that's tan, so that would be the postsynaptic membrane. And this is the postsynaptic membrane of the, of the muscle fiber itself. Okay. Now remember, it's the postsynaptic membrane that has the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Um, they actually don't show the receptors on here, but they do exist. Um, when the acetylcholine binds to these receptors, the receptors uh, open their sodium channel, and I get a localized depolarization of it, right? After that, um, if I get enough depolarization, then my voltage-gated sodium channels are going to open and action potential occurs. When that action potential occurs, it's going to spread throughout the sarcolemma. Here's part of the sarcolemma here. Okay. The uh, postsynaptic membrane is going to be um, next to the sarcolemma. Okay, this is also, also, oops, let me do that better. This is also sarcolemma here. Okay, so it goes down um, throughout the sarcolemma, and the action potential then goes deep into the muscle fiber through these blue things here. These are T tubules. Okay, they go down the T tubules. And these here are truncated, they're just cut off T tubules. All of the red things here are mitochondria. They're all mitochondria. Okay. Uh, once the action potential gets to these T tubules, uh, here in tan, I've got the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to then open its voltage gated calcium channels, and uh, calcium is going to leave the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which allows, if you recall, which allows the cross bridge cycle then to occur. Uh, a couple other things that you need to know. So, recall that this whole thing here is just a section of the muscle fiber. So each one of these is a myofibril. This whole thing is a myofibril. This whole thing is a myofibril. 
and you might recall myofibrils have acted in myosin. Here I've got um, a Z line. So here's a Z line, here's a Z line from here to here. That would be a sarcomere. A sarcomere. Okay, a couple other things to point out. This is a nucleus of the muscle fiber. Nucleus of the muscle fiber. This is the nucleus of a Schwann cell. Okay, now this that wraps around the axon of the motor neuron, um, this is called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath. Okay, the myelin sheath is created by the Schwann cells. To get a better look at some of these Schwann cells, here in the back, this is a Schwann cell. This is part of a Schwann cell here. So Schwann cells have these big arms that wrap around the axon. <clears throat> so here is a nucleus of a Schwann cell, and here is a nucleus of a Schwann cell. And it also is depicted by this blue thing here. If I turn this around, so you might recall that this is the sarcolemma, right? The sarcolemma here. Um, this part is actually the endomycium, the endomycium, and it's made up of two layers. Okay, it has the basal lamina, the basal lamina, and it has reticular fibers. So these are reticular fibers.